In today's video, teenage paranormal investigators battle the maniacal denizens of the automotive graveyard as we play Fear and Faith, the scary skirmish rule set from Ganesha Games. Well, hello folks, and welcome to today's game of Fear and Faith, the horror skirmish miniatures rules from Ganesha Games, who also published the very popular Song of Blades and Heroes fantasy rules, and in fact, Fear and Faith and Song of Blades and Heroes share a lot of the same basic mechanics. So if you've played Song of Blades and Heroes before, a lot of things you'll see today in Fear and Faith will look kind of familiar. So our buddy Mark is showing up in about an hour, and he and Lynn are going to play a cooperative game where a team of teenage paranormal investigators are on the lookout for their lost colleagues. A couple of the uh, teenage investigators have gotten lost, and so the rest of the troop are trying to find them. And unfortunately, that search is going to take them to an abandoned automotive graveyard, which is populated by a bunch of maniacs. So the good guys here are led by Frederico. He's there on the front left, and he is kind of the front man for the group. He is a hero. He has smacked down. He is steadfast and has a thick skin. So he's pretty good in hand-to-hand, -hand, but he doesn't have any shooting. Next to him in the white t-shirt there is Blake. Blake is on a mission to track down and kill her brother, who turned into a serial killer. So uh, she has led Frederico to the automotive graveyard here, and they have become trapped in this place. And so uh, the other uh, team members are going to have to try to find them and rescue them. But anyway, Blake has a pistol, she has a smart mouth, and she can do a gymnastic flip. In the back row there with the red hair and the sign, you see Norval. Norval is kind of a shaggy uh, conspiracy theory type character. He is comical. He has a flashlight. He has flea, long move, and a can of spray paint. To the right of Norval is Violet. Violet has danger sense a flashlight, and a machine pistol, which no doubt will come in handy. And then to the far right on the front row is Scuba Gorgon, the Hound of Acheron. He is an animal. He is indiscriminate. He has long move. He's ravenous, savage, and has thick skin. And we'll explain those traits as they come up during the game. So as I mentioned, Frederico and Blake have gone missing, which leaves Violet, Norval, and Scuba Gorgon with the task of trying to find them. And of course, they'll be challenged by various uh, denizens who reside in the automotive graveyard. And also, there very might well be some supernatural big boss, some malevolent force that uh, our heroes are going to have to try to defeat as well. Or perhaps they will just collect their team members and try to escape and call that a moral victory. So that is a rough outline of today's game, and to add one additional wrinkle, the good guys will not know where the bad guys are. The good guys will go about their business, and the bad guys will pop out at inopportune moments to make things really exciting. So we'll just have to see whether the uh, skeleton crew of good guys is able to defeat the serial killers long enough to rescue their compatriots. And perhaps even, when they get to full strength, they'll be able to defeat the master evil, the big boss, whatever that may be, here in the automotive graveyard. So if that sounds good to you, please settle in with a bowl of popcorn as we play some Fear and Faith from Ganesha Games. Okay, we are back. Lynn is with us and Mark is with us. And Mark, thanks so much for joining us here in the game room. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. You introduced us to the Song of Blades and Heroes system, I think way back at Tacticon or Genghis Khan in 2017. So what is it that you like about this particular uh, game system? It is a uh, very streamlined rule set. It's really easy to learn. And once you've learned it for the one system, you can easily apply it to any of the different genres they, have, they do. They have fantasy and science fiction and horror. So one of the things I notice about this is that uh, there's no record keeping. Basically, everything happens on the table. And even a little guy can kill a big bad monster. That's right. the other part that's really interesting is that this game will take advantage of tactics such as you know, ganging up and making sure that you knock opponents down. And if you know your traits, if you look at your traits and know the specific buffs that those are going to give you and you apply them at the right moment in the right way, that's how you win the game. Correct. Okay, so for today's adventure, I mentioned earlier that uh, we have a group of teenage paranormal investigators. And today what's happened is that uh, Blake and Frederico have taken off. Now, Blake's backstory, her tragic backstory, is that her brother, her younger brother, is a serial killer who is running amok across America. And so she has sworn to kill him, to track him down and put him in the ground. So in the typical adventures, there's usually a lot of casualties. So these guys will break up a band of cultists or, you know, uh, go ghost hunting and some bad stuff will happen. 
And so usually after the adventure, some of them get detained by the local authorities until, uh, you know, the men in black show up or the Illuminati show up and uh, tell the authorities to let them go. And they go on to the next adventure. Well, what happened here is that uh, Violet and Norville and Scuba Gorgon are in jail and Blake and Frederico have received a tip about Blake's brother. So Blake and uh, Frederico are going to take the station wagon. They're going to travel to the source of the tip and they've told the rest of the team to follow in the RV. At that point, things go radio silent. The rest of the team never hears from Frederico or Blake again. And so they get in the RV and they kind of use the tracking device to follow the uh, station wagon. And so uh, they've gone down a lonesome highway. They've passed a bunch of ghost towns. They've gone off road on this little gully, which is kind of a path with uh, washboard and, um, you know, big boulders and craters. And they just barely made it through. The RV kept bottoming out and sometimes it would get stuck and sometimes it'd be totally stopped. And then they'd get going again. And now they have arrived at what appears to be some sort of an abandoned automotive uh, graveyard. And uh, Violet is a little bit psychic. And so she says, this is the place. Frederico and Blake are trapped here somewhere. But there's also some corrupted humans running around and something else. Something of a much higher power level. I can't quite tell what it is. It must be supernatural. It's certainly unearthly. But um, we might run across it. We might not. I don't know. Maybe if we do something, it might manifest. We don't know. So that's where we are. And so Violet and Norville both have uh, firearms of a sort. Violet has a machine pistol and a tactical flashlight. Norville has a tactical flashlight and a spray can of paint. And uh, Scuba Gorgon just has his jaws and teeth. And he is obviously not a normal puppy. They found him at some uh, corrupted occult site in a cardboard box with a sign that said free puppy. They took him on board. And of course, he's not a real puppy. He can even speak a little bit, which is kind of unnerving. But he is kind of bonded with Norval. Norval's not too sure about this. But anyway, that's where we're at. So you don't know where the bad guys are. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know where your comrades are. But you do get initiative for turn one. And then you can decide what you want to do and where you want to go. So do we see the station wagon? Yes, correct. The uh, station wagon is here. You can see it way off in the corner of the compound. And I should mention that this compound is surrounded by uh, razor wire. There's fences kind of all the way around, but the razor wire is sort of rusted away and dilapidated in certain spots. And it does look like back in the corner there that if the uh, station wagon was revved up to full power, you might be able to bust through the razor wire in that corner. So some of the things you might want to consider when you're going to measure whether this is a victory or not is, did I rescue my comrades? Did we confront some of the evil? Did we get out alive? So you can prioritize those according to your preferences. But those are some of the things to consider as you enter into today's adventure. At any rate, you guys can decide how you want to split up those three people. And then when you add more people to your team, assuming that you find them, you can decide how to split them up. But uh, Lynn and Mark are going to play cooperatively, and we go into uh, turn one. So are we inside the razor wire? Short answer is yes. It's kind of a combination of razor wire and bad terrain, but you have wormed your way up the gully. You have uh, made it to this spot in the compound. You could technically back up and worm your way out. You would be escaping very slowly. Very slowly. <laughs> the station wagon's oh, probably a better run. idea. Since it looks like it's in one piece back there in the corner. Okay, so Mark and Lynn, you got your three people there. You got Violet with the machine pistol. You got Norval with the spray can. And you got uh, Scuba Gorgon with his vicious claws and teeth. So as Mark has explained to us, one of the benefits of the Blades and Heroes system, also used in Fear and Faith, is that there's only really two main stats you need to worry about. And that is quality and combat. Everything else is kind of determined by traits. And uh, one of the interesting mechanics is when you're rolling to activate somebody, you can give them up to three activations. You roll one, two, or three dice, which means if you succeed once, they get one activation, twice, two activations, three, three activations. But if you fail twice, let's say you roll three or even two dice and get two failures, then you can't continue to activate on this turn. It flips to the other team and you wouldn't be able to sequentially activate all your other guys. Is that, that about the size of it? Yes. So then you tactically usually decide which characters you want to activate 
sooner or later based on their quality. Right. So someone like Norvell, who has a lesser quality, would not you would not activate him first and roll three dice because you might flub it and then the bad guys would get to go. Now, there are currently no bad guys visually on the board. <laughs> so you don't have to worry so much about flipping the activation to the other team. But uh, once things get going and there's all kinds of people running around, you'd want to be careful about that. So right now you need to pick a character to activate. You need to decide whether you're going to roll one, two, or three dice, which would give them one, two, or three activations if you were successful, and then uh, decide what they're going to do. Okay, so I think we should have Violet move up first because she has Danger Sense, which gives no ambush bonus uh, to attacking her. So if she gets into a spot and there is somebody that could ambush her, they're not going to get a bonus. Plus... Both Violet and Norville have a flashlight, so... Right. So a flashlight is going to give you guys advantages. Uh, a lot of the bad guys in this game are going to have stealth, which means uh, if they are near a piece of terrain, you can't shoot at them. But uh, the flashlight can negate that if you use an action. And also, it is currently night, so that is also a negative on shooting. But with a flashlight, if you have a character within one short stick of someone with a flashlight, that negates that. So uh, it's good to have a flashlight in the dark when dealing with stealthy enemies. Plus, it's a tactical flashlight, so you could always bonk someone on the head with it, but on a one, it breaks. I think we will start off with three dice with Violet. Okay, so you're activating Violet, and you're going to roll three dice to try to get a maximum of three activations. So Violet has a quality of three plus, so I'm looking for threes or better on the dice. So she got two activations and one failure. One failure is not enough to turn over, so she can do her two activations, and then we can continue activating after that. So, Mark, we discovered something fun, and that is uh, the medium and long... Uh, movement sticks, you use movement sticks in this game, are equivalent in length to these uh, Gaslands movement templates. So there's the medium, there's the long, and we also have a short one, which is actually five millimeters too long, and that is from um, X-Wing. So we can use these, or we can use your handy-dandy movement template that you made yourself. We'll use these. These look good. Okay. So everyone moves a medium, unless otherwise indicated through their traits. Which is Norville and Scuba Gorgon can move long. Norville and Scuba Gorgon can move long. And what is difficult terrain on here? The toxic goop, the tire field, trying to climb over a car, something like that. Okay, so I have two activations, so I'm going to move Violet twice. And the system uses front to back movement. Yeah, okay. And that's heresy in my mind because we've been conditioned not to do that. So this is a little bit different, but that's okay. So Violet has moved a medium and that's what she moves. So that's one activation. One activation. And then I'm going to do the other activation here. Okay. So Violet has moved over to the barricade. So Violet has moved. Now, one of the things I was going to mention at the beginning of the game, which I didn't, but I'm mentioning now, is that one of the actions you guys can take is to go, psst, Frederico, psst, Blake, and try to see if they respond. You could also just go, Frederico, Blake. If you do that, everybody's going to hear. But if you kind of do it quietly and someone's within, let's say, a long, then they might help. <laughs> you, might, you might get a response. So that's one way you can kind of sound them out. And Violet has her sense. Well, she has danger sense, and she also has a, uh, a rudimentary psychic power we're going to call a plot device. So when I need to convey some information and there's no convenient way to do it, she might get a, uh, some kind of vision or something like that. But really, all she knows is they are here, and there's also some other people here, and something really bad. So that's where we're at. So Violet has activated, and uh, now who's next? Scuba Gorgon is next, who okay. also has a quality of three. Okay, so Scuba Gorgon. So, uh, Lynn, are you going to roll for his activations? Yes. And how many activations are you going to roll for? He's going to go three as well because he's got a go three plus. Three. All right, go for it. And I failed. You I failed twice. But I got one. But you got one, so he can move one long. But at least he got to go long. Okay. So Scuba Gorgon is on the move. And finally, you have Norval. We don't. Oh! Because I failed well, twice. Well, that's right. So normally, let's say there were bad guys on the field, 
you failed twice, then it would flip to the other team. The other team is not on the board yet, so uh, we just start over with a new turn. So now you guys activate again, and um, you can decide which one of those three is going to attempt to roll for activations. What do you think, Scuba Gorgon? Yes. Three? Three, three plus. Three nice. successes. Three successes for Scuba Gorgon. So he could move, actually, three longs. He cannot call out, though I suppose you could have him call out. He's an animal, but he's Scuba Gorgon. He could bark. He could roar, 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 roar. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll let him have that power. Why not? So I'm going to move Scuba Gorgon twice and call out. Okay. One. So he'll be right by that door. Two. Okay. And he uses third action to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you do. You hear someone in there going, Scooby, is that you? Help. And that's Blake. Blake is in that shack. Okay. Good deal. So what's happening here is Blake was investigating and Frederico was investigating. And a bunch of bad guys came out of the shadows. And so she ran into the shack, but it had a spring-loaded door. And it looks like a wooden door, but it's actually a steel reinforced door. So she's in there with barred windows and, a, you know, a steel door. And so she's trapped in that shack. So you guys can attempt to bust her out of there. Scooby can't. Either Norval or a Violet could. They need a six to break down the door because it's reinforced. If they're working together, they get a free group activation. They don't need a leader to activate them together. They can do a group activation. Then they need a five or a six. or they can go over to this scrap pile and try to pick up a beam or a pipe or something like that, use it as a battering ram and group activate, and then they can break down with a four, five, or six. Any of those is going to make a lot of noise. So my suggestion is to try to get Violet over to that pile and pick up a beam, but I'm only going to use two activations to reduce my chances of a turnover because I do want to get Norval over, over there. Over there, yeah. Violet is activating with two. Two dice. Two failures. Two failures. Okay. <laughs> so again, if there were bad guys on the field, then it would be their turn to try to activate somebody. They aren't here yet. So uh, you guys get another turn. So now it's turn three. The night is deepening. There is a moon. There is a full moon. So you can kind of see what's going on. But uh, there's shadows everywhere. Strange noises from the desert everywhere. A spooky wind rolls through the place and uh there's thunder but there's nothing in the sky so uh anywho what's going on i'm going to roll two dice for violet again right. and uh hope to get uh, some actions this time and not get a turnover so i can get norval up there one, one success so you can get to the junk pile so she has used her action to move on her next activation she can use a, an action to pick up a beam or a pipe or something like that move over here and then once norval gets there he can help her knock down the door so scuba Gorin is in a good position right so i'm going to leave him there i'm going to roll all three dice with norval and hope for fours are better okay. three failures <laughs> is even worse. Norval is comical. So whenever he rolls a one on an activation die, he falls down. Okay, so Norval falls down. So now we go into uh, turn four. So Norval's gonna have to spend an action to stand up on his next activation. So gonna do the same thing. Violet, two actions. Okay. Two successes. Two successes. So she can pick out a beam and then move over here by the door if that's what you wish to do. Correct. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try to get Norval to stand up and get over there. I'm gonna roll three dice and hope for the best. Okay. Two successes. The first action, he's gonna stand up. And the second one, he has long movement as well, long lanky right. legs. The better to run away with. Yes. <laughs> I am going to activate Scuba Gorgon so that he can place himself in position to sort of block in case okay. there's somebody that comes up from behind. Right. Three activations. Three successes for Scuba Gorgon. Okay, so Scuba Gorgon has three actions to play with. I'm probably just going to use two of them. Okay. And so he is keeping watch. 
helping protect Violet. And he's in range of the flashlight. Whether that factors in or not, I don't know. But uh, she has the flashlight and he's within one short. So you guys have all activated. And normally I would just say go to the next activation. But you hear Chuckles the Clown. (laughs) Who has been riding on top of your RV since you got stuck in the sand dune a couple of miles back. So he's been on top of the RV. And as you've been bouncing along... I guess you didn't notice the clown footsteps on top of the recreational vehicle. But anyway, he's up there, and now he's going to try to activate. In fact, one of you could roll that for me, if you would. Three attempts to uh, get activations from Chuckles. He has a quality of three plus. One success. Does he have a gun or anything? He has a gigantic hunting knife. So Chuckles climbs down the ladder. (laughs) And since he turned over, we have no idea if there was anybody else who could have activated this turn. Right. So that is a turnover from Chuckles because he had two uh, failures. So now the good guys, that's you, the teenage paranormal investigators for profit, get to activate again. So what is Norval's opinion of scary demonic clowns? Big fan or not so much? He's a runner. He sees something scary. The, the best place to be is as far away as possible. Okay. So Norval is going to attempt to activate. Normally, I would try to activate Violet and Scuba Gorgon first because they have the better quality. But because they're in a good position, I'm going to do three dice with Norval. One success. One success for Norval. Run, run, run. We'll just get him, you know, get him over here. Feet don't fail me now. And that is a turnover. That is a turnover. So now Chuckles can start his relentless march. (laughs) So Norval is here. Scuba Gorgon is here. And uh, Violet is here. And Blake, for all we know, is in the uh, cabin there, in the cage, or something that sounds like Blake. Meanwhile, at the back of the RV, Chuckles the Clown is going to attempt to activate three times. Big numbers. Oh! (laughs) So, that's a turnover. Chuckles gets uh, no activations, and so the uh, paranormal investigators get to do their thing. Okay, so I want to do this once, and I want to do it successfully. So I'm going to try to get Norville over there. Uh, So I'm going to roll two dice with Norville. One to get over there, and then one to do the group action with Violet. Two successes. Okay, so Norval goes over here by the shack. He's going to grab one end of the beam. Violet is holding the other end, and now they can attempt to group activate and break down the door. So with two people and a beam, you need a four, five, or six. And it's going to take one action, so that'll be Norval's second action, They break it down. So they break down the door. So Blake is out of there. So she is free to activate on the next turn. But you've made a big crash. A big kaboom. But we still have Violet Violet and and Scuba Scuba Gorgon. Gorgon. Right. But Violet probably used at least one action to break down the door. So whatever she gets from her activation roll would be one less. And uh, Blake goes, thank God you got me out of there. Last I saw Frederico, he was running... The opposite direction, I think he might be in that pile over here. I think he might have dived into that pile, whatever that is. Is it a pile of sacks of wheat? I don't know. Maybe it's Gumdrop Mountain. But anyway, Frederico has dived into that. And that's the last she saw of him. Roll three for Violet. Three successes. You've spent one to break down the door. So she has two. Move twice. So she's going to move two mediums. So Violet has moved over here. Now, when she does that, she sees that is not Gumdrop Mountain. That is not a pile of bags of wheat. That is a pile of corpses. Human corpses, animal corpses, some corpses she doesn't know what the heck they are. So I think a fear test is in order at this point. Even though she's a paranormal investigator, this goes beyond the pale. Once she gets close enough that the moonlight reveals what's actually there and she can kind of smell what's going on, uh, yeah, she's quite fearful. Against quality... Minus one on my roll. Failed once. That's not terrible. It's simply just a recoil. So I move back one base. So does everyone have to make the fear test when they get over there now or just her? Because she told them what was there. Yeah, I think if she can prep them, 
as to what's going on, then they'll be more prepared for it mentally. So is that everybody? Nope, Scuba Gorgon. Scuba Gorgon. So he could move up and then up to Violet and then call. He could do a semi-bestial grunt that sounds vaguely human. Okay, so Scuba Gorgon is going to attempt to activate. I'm going to roll three dice because there's no reason not to because he's the last character who can activate this turn. Two successes. Two successes. So he can actually move and then uh, let out a yowl if he wishes to, to see if anybody is around. Okay, from the corpse pile, you hear, help, help, I'm stuck in here. It collapsed on me. Ah. So that sounds like Frederico from somewhere toward the base of the pile. And you might see an arm and kind of a head kind of flopping around in there, but he's kind of gotten buried. And it's very tenuous. It looks like if he struggles too much, the whole pile could come down. If somebody could help him, if they could move up there and sort of keep things propped up and help him wriggle out, maybe with a quality check, then you might be able to extricate him without having the whole thing topple over. Very good. Chuckles. Chuckles. <laughs> well, there's a couple of things that are going to happen now. Chuckles being one of them, because you guys are making kind of a ruckus. So would one of you please uh, try to give Chuckles three activations? Three dice? Three dice, please. Two. So Chuckles is going to go kind of like this and like this and park himself right next to one of the tires on the RV. So that is Chuckles. Now... Over here, you hear the sound of a chainsaw being revved. So would somebody please roll three activation dice for Mr. Rabbit? What's his quality? Three. Two successes for Mr. Rabbit. So Mr. Rabbit is going to kind of go like this, and the plot begins to thicken, as they say. Okay, so that is both of the uh, villains who are on the table at the moment. And now the good guys, the paranormal investigators, get to activate. Blake doesn't have a flashlight. Blake does not have a flashlight. She does have a pistol. So uh, Norval has a flashlight. Blake is within short of Norval. Blake has a pistol. She could certainly shoot at Mr. Rabbit if she wanted to. That's uh, how you use your traits. They work together in the dead of night to shoot the chainsaw-wielding maniac. So... Two activations with Blake. Okay. Two successes. So Blake has a pistol. Uh, There's no penalty for Knight because of the flashlight. She's going to get a plus one because of the pistol. And the uh, Mr. Rabbit will get a minus one because Blake is aiming. So Mr. Rabbit is the red die and Blake is the blue die. So uh, Mr. Rabbit rolled a two. He adds his combat of three, so that's a five. Minus one, because Blake aimed, bring it down to four. So Blake got a four, plus one for the pistol, uh, plus three for her combat, so that's eight, versus the four for Mr. Rabbit. So that is double, so that's pretty good. So that means Mr. Rabbit is dead. So she shot Mr. Rabbit. Brutally gunned him down like a dog. I'm going to roll two dice for Violet. Okay. So Violet is activating, attempting to activate. Two successes. So Violet got two successes. So uh, she gets to do two things. So what are those things going to be? Violet is going to first move over here. To the corpse pile. And then she's going to stabilize. Attempt to extricate Frederico. So she needs to roll a quality check. And if she's successful, she's helped him shimmy out of the corpse pile. If she's not successful, some bad stuff could happen. So, single die quality check, three or better. No, say it isn't so. Okay, so what happens is Frederico stays where he is, and uh, Violet is knocked over. Blah! Is that all you guys? Nope. Nope. We have uh, the other two. Scuba Gorgon, who I'm going to roll one die with Scuba Gorgon. I just want to try to get him over there, but I don't, I don't, I don't risk a turnover because okay. I want to get Norval moving. Okay. Four. Scuba Gorgon gets one activation, and he moves over by the corpse pile, and it smells really delicious. Three dice to activate Norval. 
Norval gets one success. One success for Norval and two failures, but that's a one, is it not? Oh, it so is. So that would be a f- he falls, falls over. over. He doesn't get to move before he falls over either, huh? And no. then he uses his one success to, get to stand up. So he slips, falls, stands up. I'm okay, but he's not much use. All right, is that everybody? That is everybody. Well, it's a turnover either way. It is a turnover either way. Let's see. Mr. Rabbit is lying on the ground with a hole in his chest. Would Sony please roll two dice to see if we can activate Chuckles the Clown? (laughs) Two successes. So what happens here is he takes his knife, pow, blows one tire of the RV, then moves over to the other tire. (laughs) Now, let's see. I need somebody to roll three activations for me. For a mystery guest... Uh, Three successes. Door right here to the garage. Slides open violently. That's one action. And Blake's brother, Hockey Mask, strides out. And normally he would just try to attack Violet on the ground. But Scuba Gorgon is running interference. So uh, Hockey Mask is going to attack Scuba Gorgon. Because he was hidden before he burst out, he does get to ambush. And a creature that has ambush and a sharp weapon, like the uh, machete, gets a razor attack. If uh, Hockey Mask rolls a six, he has caused a deep wound. So, if someone would care to roll for uh, Scuba Gorgon and Hockey Mask. So, that is not very good for Hockey Mask. He got a one. So, Hockey Mask got a one, plus one for ambush. Plus uh, three for his combat, so that's a total of five, right? And Scuba Gorgon got? Eight. He has a combat of four. Eight. So eight to five, so uh, Hockey Mask loses. And since the, the die roll isn't even on the attack, then Hockey Mask falls down. Hockey Mask falls down. Would you please tip over Hockey Mask? So Hockey Mask... Uh, brazenly attacked Scuba Gorgon and then slipped on some uh, guts and now fell over. And so that's where we are. Now that Hockey Mask is fallen over, he's very vulnerable to being attacked. I guess that's all the bad guys for the moment. So the uh, paranormal investigators get to go. I'm going to activate Violet first because Scuba Gorgon is an indiscriminate killer once he gets going. So I want to get Violet up and out of there, away from him. Oh, yeah, because he might decide just to chomp on Violet. Correct. And don't forget, Fred, Federico, is still in the corpse pile. Yes. (laughs) Two dice with Violet. So Violet is activating twice or attempting to activate twice. Two successes. So I'm going to stand up Violet and then move her sort of just... Enough away so that she is no longer in contact with Scuba Gorgon, so okay. Scuba Gorgon can hopefully attack and feast at will. Okay, so he's going to try to feast on Hockey Mask. I think I only want to use two dice. Two successes for Scuba Gorgon, so he's going to try to do a power attack on Hockey Mask. So that is going to give Hockey Mask a minus one on his combat roll. Additionally, Scuba Gorgon will get a plus two on his attack because he is attacking a fallen foe. If you just beat the score of someone who is down, they they die. So this might be the end of Hockey Mask. Oh, Hockey Mask got a one. Okay, so Scuba Gorgon... Is now feasting. He succeeded, but he succeeded in spectacular fashion. So not only does he kill Hockey Mask, but is a gruesome kill, and there's like Hockey Mask parts all over the place. So Scuba Gorgon is feasting upon Hockey Mask, and because of one of his traits, he's going to actually have to spend an action on his next uh, activation to stop feasting, because he's having a good old time. All right, well, that is an ignoble end to uh, Hockey Mask. All right, who else do you have to activate? So Norval and Blake. Norval and Blake. Going to do two dice with Blake. One success. And she is going to move one medium. Okay. Three dice with Norval. Two failures. But one success. One One success. success. Okay. 
So that is all the paranormal investigators. So I'm going to need three activation attempts on a quality of three plus, please. Two successes. The evil entity roars to life in the form of a Plymouth Fury. Oh no. The headlights come on. The, uh, there's a supernatural glow from inside the interior. There's no one behind the wheel and it has two activations. So the possessed Plymouth Fury revs its engine and crashes into Violet. Poor Violet. Thankfully, Violet is not surprised because she has danger sense, so it does not get right. an ambush bonus. does not get an ambush bonus. Combat of four, artificial, big, easy target, long move, mindless, thick skin, and tough. So uh, I guess it's just going to uh, try to crush Violet under its uh, white wall tires. Oh, that's oh, not that's good. Not good. <laughs> So Christine has a combat of four, so that is an eight. And what does uh, Violet have? You get a bonus of plus one because of big. Oh, okay. So that's a nine. And Violet has a combat of three, plus one is a four. Okay, so double. So she's flat out killed. So Violet is dead. Okay, so she's run over by the Plymouth Fury. But it's not a gruesome kill, so you got that going for you. Okay. So the Plymouth Fury is activated. Next, let's activate Chuckles the Clown. <laughs> what the heck, we'll try for three. Two successes, so that's better than nothing. Chuckles is gonna pop that tire. So now the RV is, it's not backing out of here. And let's see. I don't really want to get shot by Blake's pistol. Oh, what the heck. It is dark. It is dark. It's dark. He'll kind of run over this way because he's Normal a maniac. Normal has a flashlight, though. But the pistol only has a range of short, so it's minus one for every increment past that. So I need one more activation. Let's roll for three, maybe. Two failures, one success. So over here, you see this guy with a big hammer, let's call him Rody, and he briefly dashes across the opening to get over here by this corner near the station wagon. I guess that is the end of the maniac's turn for right now. Violet's gone. I think I want to try to get Blake over there to help Frederico, but my real plan is to get Norval over to Christine and spray paint her windows. Roll two dice for Blake. Okay. Two failures. Oh my gosh. This isn't good. Two ones. So that's a turnover. So the Plymouth Fury is surprised that all of its adversaries are frozen in fear. I don't do anything. They don't scatter like they're supposed to. So it revs its engines and it activates three times or at least attempts to. Three activations from the Plymouth Fury. Say goodbye to Norval. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> The other members of the team are yelling, Norval, paint the windshield, paint the windshield. He's like, what? Paint the windshield. Ah! And Christine will power attack him. Yeah, Christine could power attack. Now, there is one thing, though. People with firearms have an option to try to shoot at a charging enemy. And we're going to count the spray can as a firearm. So if he wishes to, he can try to spray Christine as she gets within short range. I think that is definitely in order. It's Norval's last stand. Firing at a charging foe, okay. Norval is standing there with his tactical flashlight in one hand and a spray can in the other. He needs to make a quality roll on one die. If he's successful, he gets a free shot at the charger when it is a short stick away. If he's unsuccessful, the charged model, that being him, is automatically stunned and fights at a minus one in the first turn of the ensuing melee. So Norval needs to succeed at a quality check. Oh, he failed it. So he was his spray can slips out of his hand, flies in the air. He's now at a minus one on combat. I tried to give Norval every opportunity to get out of this, but uh, 
Anywho, so the car has a combat of four. It gets a plus one because it's big. Norval has a minus one because he fumbled his spray can and his combat's only like two, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what happens. So uh, the car has a combat of four and it gets a plus one because it's big. So that's a 10. The car is power attacking. So Norval is at minus one for the power attack. Also minus one because he fumbled his spray can. His combat is two. So he gets a five. So it's 10 versus five. That's double. And Norval turns toes up to the daisies. He bounces high into the air, but it is not a gruesome kill, which is good. And he lands in the muck. So he will be a toxic waste zombie in the next adventure. So that is Norval. See, she's taking revenge, a horrible revenge, because you killed all her maniacs. And so that was Christine. And then I also get to move Chuckles, I think, and Rhodey. They haven't moved yet this turn. Chuckles wants to get in on the action? Sure. Two successes. Could be worse. So that is Chuckles. He moved up to the difficult terrain, then he had to stop. And then he moved a short to get across it. (laughs) So Rhodey is going to try to activate. Mark advises me that you roll three on the last guy because you can't turn over anyway. So uh, that's two successes for Rhodey. So Rhodey goes kind of over here. And then kind of over here, because why not get into the center ring, since that's where all the action is happening anyway. Plus, he saw Norval fly up into the air, and he wants to see what that's all about. Okay, good guys, paranormal investigators, I guess it is your turn. So we've just got Scuba Gorgon and Blake left. And we can still try to get Frederico out, but I think he kind of likes being under the pile. It's safe there. (laughs) So there is a big discussion amongst the paranormal investigators about whether Frederico might be happy in his corpse pile and whether they should make the effort to pull him out because there is just Scuba Gorgon and Blake left. Though if they rescue Frederico, they'll have one more and he is the leader. He is the best fighter they have. So he might be able to pummel Christine if they can rescue him. So who's activating? So we're going to do Blake. Blake is activating. How many dice? One. One die. All right. Yes. One success. A mighty success. So she's going to move to there. So she's in base to base with Christine. Now I'm going to roll three dice with Scuba Gordon. Okay. One success. One success. He has to use one to unengage. Yeah. So uh, he is now unengaged. Oh, Scuba Gordon was feasting on a body, and now he needs to restrain himself. So that was his one action. Yep. Would somebody please, now it is the, uh, the bad guy's turn, let's roll two activations for the Plymouth Fury. We need double ones right now. One success, so that's enough to run over Blake's toes. The Plymouth Fury is big, so it gets a plus one. Its combat is four, so that's five. And then uh, Blake's combat is three. Go ahead. So Christine got a five, plus another five is ten. And uh, poor Blake got a four, five, six, seven. And she gets knocked back, right? Knocked back because it's an odd number. Okay, so she bounces off the hood of the Fury, but is not otherwise harmed. So good for her. That's probably the best possible outcome. Well, this is good. So let's roll three activations for Chuckles the Clown. Three successes for Chuckles. Okay, maybe I'll start rolling again. (laughs) Chuckles moves up. He's going to do a power attack. Here's the thing. You could try to shoot Chuckles as he's running up. Because you have a pistol. I will do that. Single quality roll. Yes. Success. Blake's combat is three. A pistol gives a plus one. So I'm going to add four to her roll. And Chuckles has a combat of three. Oh, she might have gunned down Chuckles as he's running up. Oh, boy. I guess don't charge somebody with a pistol. So that is a four, five, six, seven, eight. For Blake, right? Yes. And Chuckles has a four, so that's double. So he is dispatched. He was running up with murder in his eye and got a nine millimeter slug right between the eyes. So that is the end of Chuckles the Clown. You can count that as a moral victory. I will take it. (laughs) 
So poor Blake bounced off the hood of the car. The clown was charging her and she put a bullet right between his eyes. So Rhodey is going to try to wreak a horrible revenge. So we're going to need three activations for Rhodey. Let's see what we do here. And two successes. So he used two actions to run up. So Rhodey can attack, but he can kind of lock her up in combat. She would have to break away and he would get a free hack with his heavy weapon. So I guess that is the end of the bad guy's turn. And now the heroes get to activate once again. So Scuba Gorgon, having feasted upon an enemy, has now raised up in consciousness a notch. So he's now lucid enough to realize he can grab Frederico by the collar of his denim jacket and attempt to extricate him. So we will allow him human capabilities when it comes to trying to get Fred out of the corpse pile, if you wish to do that. Yes. One success. One success. He can make a quality check, and if he succeeds in the quality check, then he has extricated Fred from the corpse pile. And he does. So with a mighty heave and a growl, he extricates Fred from the corpse pile. But you did turn over. Okay, so let's see. Who do we have? We have Rhodey and we have Christine. So what I think what we're going to do is let's do two actions on Rhodey. Yes! Power attack on Blake. So when a model with a heavy weapon, like Rhodey, performs a power attack and rolls a six, the target is automatically out of action because it has been squashed. He has a combat of three. Oh, that is an eight. Any other bonuses? Power attack. So minus one for uh, Blake. So she's got a one, a four. So eight versus four. So uh, Rhodey smashes poor Blake in the head. And she gets driven into the ground like a railroad spike. And so she's not uh, gruesomely killed. She's not completely crushed. But she's definitely out of action. So that is the end of Blake. And... Uh, Mark's kind of sad about that. You kind of had a soft spot for, for Blake there. She was spunky. She killed a clown. She yeah. bounced off the hood of the car. Thought she was the chosen one. So what one. is Christine going to do? Well, okay. So, yes, Christine, I guess, could uh, try to smash into Scuba Gorgon. So let's give Christine... Might as well do three, because that's the last one, right? And two. So Christine whips around and smashes into Scuba Gorgon. So Christine gets plus one because she's big, and uh, four is her combat. Oh, <laughs> so that is a 10 for Christine, an 11, and yeah, Scuba Gorgon yeah. has an eight. So uh, that's an even, so that just knocked over? Yep. All right, and that's it. Okay, so who's activating? We are going to do two dice with Scuba Gorgon. Scuba Gorgon. Two sixes. No bonuses for that, though, unfortunately. So Scuba Gorgon stands up. We're making a tactical decision not to attack with Scuba Gorgon this round. Okay. Because we want him to be alive and hopefully help Frederico attack. Okay. So now I'm going to roll three dice with Frederico. Okay. Three successes. Three nice. successes. So Frederico is your best fighter, and he spent most of the game in the corpse pile, so he wasn't very useful, but now you can deploy him. So I have three activations. One to move over. Right. And then a power attack on the attack using two activations. We'll give a minus one on Christine's combat roll. So Christine normally has a combat of four, plus one because she's big. But because there's a bonus here with Scuba Gorgon helping out Fred, that's minus one. And also uh, Fred is doing a power attack, that's another minus one. So her combat is now basically three. And Fred's combat is four. Make something happen. Oh, okay, so that is an eight versus a seven. So Christine still won, and uh, it's odd, so Fred is knocked back one space. Okay, well... I almost want to fade to black now because I don't want to see what's going to happen. But let's go ahead and roll. Let's give Christine, uh, I guess, two activations because she's in base to base with Scuba Gorgon. And only one. So she does a regular attack on Scuba Gorgon. She adds five. And he adds four. And so she got an eight. 
versus a nine. So she lost. So she backs up one. So she backs up about one space. And Rhodey, let's give him, uh, I guess, three. He's going to need to get over there. Two failures. So uh, he can get in there, but he can't do anything. So he is in base to base with Frederico, but he can't attack. So the heroes get to activate. I have moved the corpse pile for visibility of all the action. Now, I will I will say you have your two strongest players still on the table. Yeah. And so you're going to go with three dice on Scooby. Yep. All right. Two failures, one success. Or are you going to put him in contact with Christine? Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's a turnover. So the bad guys are going to start by activating Rhodey. Let's do two on Rhodey. Hammer time. Fail time. Two successes. So power attack on Frederico with a big hammer. So five, six, seven, eight. And Fred got a five because of the power attack. Is he knocked over? Nope. Is he's that... knocked, oh, he's knocked back. So I guess okay. he's pushed back. All right. Two dice to activate Christine. So Christine is going to power attack Scoob. Plus five and plus three. So 10 versus eight, and Scoob is knocked back one. Yeah. So he kind of bounces off the fender. And now it is time for the heroes again. It is a vicious brawl. People are bouncing off of cars. They're being hit in the head with hammers. Three dice for Frederico. Two successes. Two successes. So he can move up and attack if he wants to. I could. Or I could run this way. He could run like hell. (laughs) Okay. Discretion being the better part of valor, Frederico takes off. <laughs> so basically you're telling me the leader of the group spent most of the game in a corpse pile, got freed due to the heroism and sacrifice of all of his compatriots, then threw a few punches and took off toward the station wagon. Exactly. <laughs> in a nutshell, yes. <laughs> so, scuba gorgon, three dice. Three dice. Two activations, and Scuba Gorgon is going to take off. I'll do it over the top, at least. So yeah. There right. and there. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and see if we can get Rhodey to activate. Why don't you give me three, if you would. And that is three successes. So Mark, he's going to make a beeline toward Frederico. So that's three mediums. Yep, he gets in contact with him, so he okay. can do an attack. So that surprises me. I didn't think he'd reach him, so that is one attack. Does he have three or four for a combat? Three. So that is a six versus Fred's... Seven. 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 So uh, he loses, and he gets knocked back one. So he goes back one. Christine is going to activate. Let's give her three dice and see what happens here. And... Two successes. So she moves long, so she tears toward the station wagon. Okay, so Rhodey has gone after the human assets, and Christine is uh, going after the station wagon, or the station wagon's vicinity. So now the heroes get to activate, and I guess you could try to beat up on Rhodey if you wanted to. No, we're going to try to get out of here. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So who's activating? Frederico first. Frederico. Three successes on Frederico. So I'm going to move three times. Three. Then he'll have to spend an activation to hop into the car. Now Scuba Gorgon, who moves long, by the way. Three activations. So he can actually hop in through the back window, probably. So he's, he's inside. He's inside the station wagon. All right, let's try to activate Christine, I guess. Give me a couple dice, please. Two failures. Christine stalls out. And it flips over to the heroes. You needed that. (laughs) We did. (laughs) Yeah. The fates have intervened. They think you've suffered enough. All right, so Fred is going to activate how many times? Three dice. Three dice. One, he gets in the car. He's in the car. (laughs) But he turned over. 
Okay. So now Christine is going to attempt to activate again. Let's do two. Two successes. So I'm not sure how we do car on car combat in this system, but she's going to go ahead and crash into the station wagon. What would you suggest? It, that it has a combat of two and thick skin. Okay. So Christine smashes into the rear of the station wagon. They're both big. And Christine got a, what is that, a seven versus a three. So there's no real car on car combat in this system. So we kind of made it up on the fly. So Christine was successful in combat. She struck the station wagon, took out one tire and rim. So now instead of moving long, it's moving medium. If it loses another one, it's moving short. And if it loses a third, it's not moving at all. And now I guess we got to activate Rody, who's over there by himself. So let's give him three. Why not? And the roadie <laughs> fails completely, so uh, it turns over to the heroes. How many dice for Federico? Three dice. Three dice. Two successes. So the uh, family truckster takes off into the desert with uh, a slightly soiled uh, Federico and a well-satiated Scooby and none of the other uh, paranormal investigators. Perhaps all the dead will come back and haunt the companions that left them behind. In a future episode. So taking stock, Christine is still around, as is Rhodey, but uh, Hockey Mask and Chuckles the Clown and uh, Mr. Rabbit are all dispatched, as are Norville, uh, Violet, and um, poor Blake. So uh, you did rescue Frederico, but there was a high cost. Okay, Mark, what'd you think? Did we make a travesty of uh, fear and faith? No, I, I thought it was great. It, to me, it actually felt like a movie. Uh, people, it was sort of like there was the moment's attention, the failing at the exact wrong moment, but then the heroes limp away to to uh, hopefully come back. But I, I think you're right. I think the, the final scene is all six of those bodies rising up from the swamp with right. green muck all right. over them. So what was the most uh, gut-wrenching moment of the game, if you can remember? Oh, it was you know, Blake, you know, having done so well in the previous round and then to just right. die like that. It was, that was, that was hard. Yeah. Well, we get attached to our little plastic figures. We do. <laughs> okay, folks. Thanks very much for stopping by. We hope you enjoyed today's uh, somewhat scary episode. We'll be back soon with some more tabletop wargaming goodness. But until then, take care of yourselves and watch out for those maniac clowns. <laughs>